Well, Kansas State has done it again. The Kansas State University's Wildcat Wind Power Group has emerged victorious in the prestigious collegiate wind competition for the second consecutive year. Now, Rosemary, you and I saw this competition down in San Antonio at ACP 2022, and we wandered around the all the engineers and <laughs> watched them compete. It, it's a really serious competition. Yeah, it's cool. They bring like portable um, wind tunnels into the into the hall so that they can uh, test out their their designs. And there's a few different categories. I I, this one, I guess they're older. The one I was mostly looking at when I was there was the, the kid wind, which is I think elementary school age kids. And, you know, they've got to make, a, I think they were making floating offshore, the one that we saw. And they even had wave tanks, like a wave tank there inside the wind tunnel. They brought that into the hall. And that was pretty cool seeing the designs that kids had come up with to, you know, that they're, they're trying to solve the same problems that um, wind energy engineers are. You make sure that the turbine doesn't fall over and that it can generate a lot of energy. Um, and I guess that that's the same for the university age, age one as well, but maybe with, you know, a little bit, a little bit more sophisticated designs and manufacturing methods. Well, yeah, at K-State's uh, Wildcat Wind Power competed against 11 other schools. And this competition takes basically an academic year. Uh, and they're tasked with designing, building, and testing model wind turbines uh, and presenting their creations <laughs> at the competition, which was in Boulder, Colorado. A uh, really nice place to, to have a competition. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, I'm not sure where next year's is going to be. I haven't seen uh, anything from the Department of Energy where uh, the 2024 competition is going to be. But you'd like to see more colleges participate in this because... It's a really good engineering exercise. It's kind of like some of the F SAE off-road, SAE aircraft competitions, which, Rosemary, I think you competed in some of those, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did um, the uh, Aero Design, SAE Aero Design West. Uh, I did that five times, including one time when I was at UC Davis in the US. The rest of the time was at my, my real university, an Australian one. Um, and that was really cool. And then while I was in America, I also was on the team for human powered vehicle, which was a, a similar one. Um, and I did dabble a tiny bit with the formula SAE, um, back at the Australian national university, but it was the era design was the main one I did. Um, and I have often said that I learned as much or more real engineering in that project than I did in the whole rest of my degree combined. Cause it's so, so different to, you know, you have an open-ended design problem um, instead of, you know, like when you're doing your, your homework and, or studying for exams, doing exam questions. It's like, you know, here's a problem. There's one, one solution to it, try and get the right answer. But then when you go out and you work as an engineer, it's not about that anymore. Um, and it's not about, you know, just working longer and longer and longer to try and get um, more <laughs> closer to the exact right answer. It's about how far can you get in the time that you've got available, um, all sorts of other real world constraints like, uh, I don't know, being able to access the the workshop, um, being able to fundraise. The fundraising was one of the, the aspects, the things that I learned during my time on that team that I never would have thought was a real engineering skill, but you need that. Even when you, you know, you go into a company and you're like, we should do this project, then you have to fundraise within your company to, um, to find, find the funds for that. You have to convince people that this is the right project to do. Um, not to mention all the manufacturing, you know, you learn so much more about, um, manufacturability when you're, you're making something, you test it, it breaks, you fix it. It's yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Rosemary, there were sponsors last year, right? The, the, those teams had corporate sponsors. Some of them did. I thought that they did. Yeah, I, I bet they they would have. We, um, I, yeah, I did all the the fundraising. I think while I was at um, ANU, and I approached places like the um, Civil Aviation Authority. Um, they they sponsored one year. Um, just you know, companies, uh, engineering companies in the area that were trying to re recruit that they, you know, they wanted to get their name out there so that um, students might consider working for them. Um, trying to think what other kinds of companies. Uh, yeah, just lots of, lots of companies that just want, you know, just think it's, it's cool. It's not, 
you know, a few thousand dollars was a big deal for our team, but doesn't matter that much to a big company. So some, you know, often they would do it just because, you know, they see kids having a go and want to want to help out. I'd like to see them do the finale for it like they did last year in San Antonio. Do it at the ACP event. We're in Minneapolis next year. Like host the thing back there where you can get everybody. And then those students, not only uh, could they possibly get some sponsorship from some of these asset owners or other people in the industry, but they get direct exposure to them. You've got all of them, the same people walking around the same hall and have them come in, give them free free access to the event and expose them to the wind industry. I think that's that's a win-win for me. They could pass our resumes around. Yeah, ex- exactly. I was just going to say I was hiring for um, my consulting business and my YouTube channel and the guy that I, I hired to yeah do engineering and research, his, he was straight out of school, but he had been the technical director for the Formula SAE team. And I, I know what that means. You know, that is, that is fantastic management experience and project management experience. Um, much better. I would much rather uh, someone with experience like that than someone that had spent a couple of years in a, a graduate program where you're still kind of getting, you know, spoon spoon fed tasks to do and very clear expectations. And yeah, it's worked out really well because he is so proactive. He easily sees what, you know, what's the deliverable that needs to be done and then problem solves to to get there and only, um, yeah, it comes to me when when there's a roadblock, but doesn't in general need his handheld the whole way through. And I think that that's the kind of skills that you learn from these kinds of projects. And I hope that other employers see how how valuable that is because it is like getting someone with a few years work experience rather than you know comparing to someone that has only been at university, only studying to get good grades and not learning any of that stuff that you you need to be able to actually function in a workplace. Yeah. Well. well- Congratulations to Kansas State and all the competitors. We hope to see you, like Joel said, in Minneapolis next year. 